In this video, you're going to learn how to use summation notation. Here's an example of summa summation notation. Often we want to sum the terms in a sequence, so summation notation is a shorthand way to express this. This number tells the first integer to substitute for k to create the terms in a sequence. And the number on top of the symbol tells us the last integer to substitute for k. It does not tell us always the number of terms. This is the formula that generates the sequence. This is an explicit term formula. Not a recursive formula, not a sum formula. This is an explicit formula for a term. This is the Greek letter sigma, which means to add the terms in the sequence. So this is also known as sigma notation. I will use, use the words interchangeably. So how do we use the sequence here? I'll let this kind of finish its little thing, and then I'll explain. Okay, the terms of the sequence are 5, because we first start by putting 1 in for k, and we 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. Then we put 2 for k. Sorry, 2 for k. 3 times 2 plus 2 is 8. Then we put 3 for k. 3 times 3 plus 2 is 11. Then 4. 3 times 4 plus 2 is 14. And then 5. 3 times 5 plus 2 is 17. And remember that summation means to sum the terms, so we have to add 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17. Just a note, if I ask you to do a summation notation, this is the work that I would want you to show. Probably not this crowded, but I would want you to show how you got the terms, the list of terms, and the sum. So let's find the sum in this one. Notice this one is k equals 0 to 3 of 3 halves to the k power. So we start by substituting 0, and then we continue by substituting, oh, it says n, it should be k, equals 1, 2, and 3. So when we put the numbers in, we end up with 3 halves to the 0, 3 halves to the first, 3 halves squared, 3 halves to the third, which are these numbers. 1 plus 3 halves plus 9 fourths plus 27 eighths. And notice that you get four terms. Students, a common mistake is that students think the number on the top is the number of terms. No, it is the last term number. In this case, since we started with 0 and ended with, ended with 3, we actually have four terms in this sequence. Of course, the point of a sum is to add them. So the sum is 65 eighths. Now let's see if we can go backwards. Given the sum of the terms of the sequence, can we write it using summation notation? It's a good start to number the terms. And then I'm going to rewrite 4 as 4 over 1, because that give, establishes a pattern in the numerator and in the denominator. Notice the pattern in the numerator um, is that we take the term number plus 3. And the, and the pattern in the denominator is we take the term number squared. So when you're dealing with a fractional pattern, look at the numerator and the denominator separately. So now the rule can be written as k equals 1 to 5. Oh, dang it, I got my k's and my n's mixed up again. This time I am going to stop and meet. So let's get where we were here. There we go. The sum as n goes from 1 to 5 of n plus 3 over n squared. I think I'm setting an all-time record for stopping videos and making corrections, but hopefully um, that you will understand that I do make mistakes. Now notice where the different terms go in our formula, in our summation notation notation. Okay, notice n equals 1 is the first term number. n equals 5 is the last term number n plus 3 is the pattern we notice in the numerator, and n, over, n squared is the pattern we notice in the denominator. Um, so writing the terms helps us to see how the terms follow a pattern of the term number. So we're writing an explicit formula in which we can just t plug in the term number to get each term. And that is the end of summation notation.